Blood Gossip, a crazy podcast about DC, with your host A Rock and PD. When we speak up, get your geeks up, cause you know you about to get geeked up. So sit back, relax, and get comfy. Lose your mind like Solomon Grundy, and listen to a show that won't be forgotten. Coming straight out of Gotham. Out there in fanboy nation, welcome to another fabulous episode of Straight Out of Gotham. This is episode ten. We are a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network, hosted by the Dadgum Original Batman on Film. I am your co-host from the Garden State, Peter Vera, and today we're recording on July tenth, twenty twenty. That's right, episode ten on July tenth. And as always, like I said, fantastic show for you today. Now, let me introduce you to my co-host, the twenty sixteen hot dog eating champion of Syosset, Mister Eric Holzman. <laughs> Hello there. Yes, Whew, that was a tough day. Fourth of July, just like everyone else. Syosset is not as well known. You know, there's another one in Cody Island that overshadows, but. This Man, is the one I, I ate. Yeah, I ate 150 hot dogs. Now, do you eat the bun and the hot dog together? Or do you separate them? Like, how, what is your technique? You have to eat both together. You get okay. disqualified if you don't. So you got to eat them all together. Yes, they okay. all have to be one unit. <laughs> you eat it together, and then uh, you throw up later. It's a fun, fun experience. If you never tried a hot dog eating contest, I suggest you give it a shot. Have you ever thought about challenging Kobayashi or uh, Joey Chestnut? I haven't. I don't want to embarrass them. They have such a huge following, so I kind of, you know, like you know, let them have their thing. Let them have their lane. It's fine. Compet- I'm not so much of a competitive eater outside of the hot dogs. They do other things, so you know that's what they do. That's their thing. Uh, uh, what is your favorite condiment? M- mustard? Are you ketchup on hot dog guy? Relish? What do you got? I'm definitely a mustard on hot dog guy. Uh, I could do a little mix every once in a while, a little mustard ketchup mix. Um, I'm not a big sauerkraut fan, and being German, that's what? kind of a sore point. I know. Oh, I know. Delicious. I know. And again, I'm a German guy, German American, so you'd think I love sauerkraut. And I do like it on other things, just not really on uh, hot dogs. We have and, shared a schnitzel together. I'll say that much. <laughs> yes, yes, we have. We've yeah, shared a schnitzel that. together. I have shared a schnitzel. Uh, <laughs> I do like chili dogs. I'm a big chili on hot dog guy. You and Sonic I, I, Hedgehog. Yeah, yeah. It's chili is some good stuff, man. I like chili on its own, chili on nachos, chili on hot dogs. This is a great time to mention we are sponsored by Ballpark Hot Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and Hormel Chili. Yeah, Hormel we Chili. sold out. We got sponsors now. <laughs> 10 episodes in, we hit double digits. No, we got Dude, that's the dream. That's the dream. We want to oh. get sponsors. That's what we want. We right. want sponsorship. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Enough with the hot dogs. Yes. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I taking it away? You're the big right. man on campus. You're the champ. Okay. 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 So... Uh, We're coming to you tonight, again, like Pete said. This is July 10th. It's Friday, July 10th. Uh, Our 10th episode. Again, crazy. Think about it. Uh, It's kind of gone fast, but I've been enjoying every minute. So there's a couple of things that have happened recently. There's there's some things that are coming up that we're going to discuss. First of them being uh, JusticeCon. Uh, this is actually was announced last um, last month, middle of June, I think it came. We heard the, we got the news, and uh, there's been series of of trailers, and there's been information coming out, and it is going to be hosted by, from as far as I know right now, the Nerd Queens comic book debate, and of course Zack Snyder. So we'll also see have appearances here from Dark Side actor Ray Porter and the storyboard artist Jay Oliva. So Pete. Uh, Justice Con. It's kind of a cool, cool concept. You know, they uh, the people who obviously the release of Snyder Cut movement. This is an extension of that. And not only now are they getting the HBO Max Snyder Cut, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League. We are also now have Justice Con from that. So, what are your feelings on Justice Con? Are you going to be uh, paying attention to it? Are you going to go? In, I'm using air quotes to it. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, this is kind of piggybacking right off of San Diego Comic Con at home, which is interesting enough as it is. So, to see a fan led con is uh, is is interesting. I don't know if this kind of spawned out of the pandemic, if this was something that was going to happen in general, or just based off of uh, you know the the Snyder Cut being uh, released and everything. But I'm I'm interested to see what uh, what it says. I'm always interested what uh, Zack Snyder has to say. He seems to, uh, you know, he <laughs> he likes to drop the mic as they say. And uh, I, I know Ray Fisher will be there. He's going to make an appearance i will i will i'm interested to see what he has to say he's been very vocal on uh, the twitter sphere lately um i'm mostly what i'm really p- want to pay attention to is ray porter um i kind of would like a tease of the dark side voice i don't know if because this is a fan-led event if we're going to get anything you know for, uh, about the snyder cut i don't i don't know if we're gonna get a tr- trailer because i feel like that's going to be saved for fandom uh, dc fandom which i believe happens the next month in august so uh, it's just interesting i mean kudos to everyone who organizes this event i mean Sn- Zack snyder is very good to his fans and he's very loyal to the people who uh, support him all the time and this is that group has you know they've they pushed for this and they got the snyder cut and they 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 worked their magic and uh you know this is just you know um, the cherry on top of the ice cream, no? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely looking to see, hear something from Ray Porter. Uh, obviously, he was cut out of the theatrical cut completely, so we haven't heard from him yet. So it'd be good, interesting to see exactly what he's going to say. Uh, it's also going to be interesting to on um, what they're going to cover. I don't know how long this is going to be, and you know, there's a lot of. Um, obviously unseen footage and there's a lot of obviously un there's he's obviously teased a lot of things as well in this um in this time period between Zach being uh Zach leaving the theatrical uh the production for the theatrical cut and uh now so there's obviously a lot of time that's gone past and we've we've seen things from it he's dropped hints and so, shown clips of storyboards and and um some images of certain scenes but we haven't really gotten anything else so I'm wondering what else we're going to get um, in Justice Con. Uh, and it's two I weeks away, so, th- so there could be more coming, which is, you know, interesting. Like, yeah, I don't it know def- what it could be. You know, other personalities, other stars of the movie, who knows? I mean, it, the possibilities are kind of endless, but uh, we'll see where this goes. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if any of the other cast shows up. Uh, you know, again, since this is all virtual, it's going to, it, you really could have anyone on. Um, if they're available, right? Like if anyone's just sitting around like, hey, come on, we're going to do this thing. Okay, I'll come on. And, yeah. you know, you, anyone could pretty much hop in on this. So the cool, the, that's the cool part of it being virtual, similar to um, what uh, San Diego Comic-Con is going to be and Fandom, DC Fandom, and then eventually New York Comic-Con, I'm sure. Even though there's a little bit of news here too as well. Uh, I read the other day that they haven't canceled New York Comic-Con yet, the actual convention at Javits Center. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it's it's weird how uh, certain <laughs> people are reacting to the pandemic. Um, you know, we all we would I would love nothing more than to have a vaccine ready and you know get my shot and go to New York Comic Con because uh, I love it. I've been covering New York Comic Con for the last two three years for Batman on film. Um, I've had a blast. I mean, I've sent you guys the the year before last. I sent you guys the photos and everyone was incre- incredibly jealous of just everything that I was able to do, which which was fantastic. Just you know, fa- photos with fans and. Getting a chance to talk uh, Batman the Animated Series Blu-ray with Kevin Conroy and, uh, and and Lauren Lester and so on and so forth. So for, to have you join me last year with Ryan Haas, I mean, you guys had a blast. Uh, Ryan's first time in New York. Uh, it, it was it was an, it was a great experience. We had so much fun covering that. So I would love nothing more than to hopefully get back to New York Comic Con. And as you know, it's very crowded. So uh, you know, unless there's some kind of vaccine, I would probably skip it myself. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I'm not so sure about that. Um, I know they're trying to be optimistic, and they want to ha- actually. You want to have it, of course. You want to have it. I mean, it, like you said, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's something for everyone there. So it literally is a big comic. Like it's a huge comic convention. That's what yeah. it is, and it's just. Um, it's fun to see all the cosplay with all the different fans, and it's not just like DC. You have you have Marvel and Star Wars and and the anime stuff and anything you think of. Yeah, there's so many different uh, parts of it, which is is awesome. It's and I of course would love to be able to go again. 
but especially if DC Universe is doing something again, wink, wink. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, of course I'd love to go again. But obviously, safety first, and, and and getting together in a group that big during a pandemic. Yeah, I don't know. Um, There's a reason why the great, late great John Schnepp called us all sweaties because it gets very hot in there, and we're all perspiring, and it's just yes, it wouldn't be a comfortable environment. But um, you know, fingers crossed. You know, uh, Dr. Fauci and the rest of the people in charge of medicine. <laughs> can try to facilitate some kind of vaccine as soon as possible so we could have a con. Yeah, so um, obviously maybe they just cut out Saturday because Saturday is the busiest day. Busiest day. We just remove Saturday from the equation and mm-hmm. you know do the other days. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so um, I just wanted to drop that little bit of news because we were talking about uh, um, San Diego Comic-Con and then um, obviously Justice Con. So I wanted to just drop that. that. I did read that um, New York Comic-Con, they have not decided yet what they're going to do. So we'll see. But back to getting just closing in on uh, closing the loop on Justice Con. I am intrigued. And again, I think this is great that the fans who wanted the Snyder Cut now are getting this kind of extension of that. And um, I think it's awesome. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to see how, what goes down that day. Yeah, it just. I would hope this kind of leads to more uh, fan-like events. You know, these these kind of virtual cons, so to speak. If we can organize something, I don't know if a group of fans can afford a you know a Javits Center or a convention hall type of <laughs> thing to rent out for a couple of days. But if you could do a virtual con, I think that's a great idea, and that's you know something to take positive for, going forward. That you know this could be something that could be organized with uh, various number of creatives in comic books and film and television. So if this becomes a thing, uh, you know it, this could be really interesting. Yeah. And if anyone's interested in Justice Con, you can go to YouTube. There's a couple of trailers. If you just type in Justice Con, you'll be able to see the trailers that they've set up for it. So you also can go there and do that. They have three trailers with all their guests. And uh, it, it's, yes. it's an impressive list uh, from everyone from you know, Shiraz Faruqi from Comic Book Debate will be. I, I think he'll have something to say on the panel. Um, the guy, I, uh, the mighty Pegasus who won the uh, Snyder Cut fan poster. Uh, yeah. He, 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 he will be there. Uh, he will make an appearance. So, you know, if, you, if you've been following the release of Snyder Cut movement, um, all the bigwigs are going to be there. Uh, I believe Sean O'Connell, he's writing a book on the release of Snyder Cut movement. So uh, everybody who's anybody related to the the Snyder Cut should be in attendance for this. Yes. So again, props to everyone who is involved. I hope it goes well. I hope you guys get a good turnout. And that, yeah, like Pete said, that it can lead to more of these things happening for other groups of people and other groups who want um, who want some kind of con hey, around that. Maybe specific. one day there'll be a straight out of Gotham con. Who knows? You know, <laughs> I mean, we're already sponsored by Ballpark and uh, yes. Bell Kelly, so the possibilities could be endless, guys. I'm going to have to talk to our sponsors. We're going to see about, about getting that. I mean, after 10 episodes, I don't know. That could be, We could kind of be, you know, reach it a little bit. But maybe, maybe if we get another 10, we can get Wonder Bread involved and we can finally put like our hot dog in a bun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. Hey, I'm for it. I'm all for it. Otherwise, I'm all for hot dog like a stanza, you know, with a fork and a knife. <laughs> I'm all for growing. I want to grow with this thing. So, yeah, whatever we can do. Uh, and, you know, turn the page and, you know, keep on moving, keep on growing. Speaking of turning the page, we have a new Batwoman. Ooh. As everybody knows, Ruby Rose, who played the character in season one of the CW show Batwoman, Ruby Rose stepped down and left the role. So there was talk, obviously, in the, initially they were going to replace Kate Kane. Then they said, no, we're going in another direction. There was a lot of pushback by fans. A lot of fans were like, no, just recast the role because Bat- Kate Kane is Batwoman. And obviously, you know, all the... the the um, discussion around that and what was going on there. But see the CW were, was like, no, we're going to do it this way. And they have finally picked somebody they have chosen chosen. And if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry, Javicia Leslie to take over the role as uh, Bat Batwoman. And she is a bisexual actress. So it's kind of keeping with the theme of the show. Um, Kate Kane is a lesbian, but it's kind of keeping with the theme of the show. And, uh, yeah, they, um, they, they cast this actress. She's been in, hold on a minute. I know she's been in another show and I'm forgetting which show she was on. Okay. She's she was, oh, go ahead. No, I was just she was on, Ruby Rose. we're jumping over yeah. each other. <laughs> she has Ruby Rose's full support, which is great to see in the, uh, in the casting change. So that's a good thing. 
Yes, she is, was on the show God Friended Me, which was on CBS for a couple seasons, also produced by Greg Berlanti, so there's kind of the connection there. Uh, she's been on the show BT, BET's The Family Business, and she's been, she was in the movie Always, the Bri- Always a Bridesmaid. So, Pete, with this new um, direction with a Batwoman, not only is this, you know, this a, she's a bisexual woman, she's also a woman of color, what is your take on this? I'm almost of two minds of this subject because one, I, you know me, I'm like the continuity police. I love right. staying true to the characters and the source material, but it's, it's interesting to me because and then I hear where the show might be going. And while like, I don't, Kate Kane will always be Batwoman to me, mostly because of the Greg Rucker run and how much I really enjoyed that when she took over Detective Comics and such. But, you know, um, the Mike, Mike Snyder, uh, you can follow him at the Mike Snyder on Twitter, made a valid point that Harley Quinn was also a show related uh, show original character. And she's kind of taken off and now she has her own series of TV shows and movies and merchandise and everything. So this could, you know, this, this isn't, you know, something that uncommon. It's just weird to see what's a character that's already been established. But when I hear about where the show is going and that she is essentially like Kate Kane's almost MIA, so she takes up the mantle and refine Kate Kane, I think that could be a really interesting show. And I think that could, you know, a lot of people weren't happy with Batwoman, it feels like. A lot of people were, didn't think Ruby Rose did a good job in the role. They didn't think the writing was good outside of Alice. Um, I personally, I've, I've only watched four episodes of Batwoman, and I actually was very supportive, and I actually did enjoy what I liked. I, I didn't see a lot of the issues that most people did with Ruby Rose, and I also enjoyed her in Crisis on Infinite Earths, as much as that was kind of fan service with mostly cameos. But um, I, w- I do want to finish Batwoman at some point during this pandemic. And uh, I-, I enjoyed it for the most part. You know, the best parts of that show were Batwoman fighting. So I have to do – I want to pay a little more attention to everything else that's around that. But uh, th- this – where they're going with the show, it sounds cool to me because of how they're taking it. And who knows? Maybe like Kate Kane comes back and then, you know, we'll see where the show goes from there. But um, – where it's leading. I, I like where it's going and uh, I look forward to the next season. I want to give it another shot and I want to finish season one and I, I'm interested to see how season one ends. So where they pick off because I don't know because I'm kind of, you know, slacking. So, uh, you know, it's 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 all new to me. So I'm kind of just catching up, but I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, I um I started watching the show as well as you know. I think I, I think I made it through four episodes and then I just gave up. I It wasn't my wasn't for me. Uh, Rachel Scarston's Alice is incredible. It's an incredible character. Everyone and loves yeah. yeah, and Megan Tandy did a pretty good job um, as well. But uh, the lead, Ruby Rose, and you, for me, uh, was very one note. Uh, she didn't do much more than what she, like, her kind of gruff, standoffish look. And I just didn't feel the character. So, uh, you know, I stopped watching it. It's hard to follow a show uh, if you don't like the lead. So, yeah. And you're not this, alone. A lot of people yeah, have that. Right. So this character is a different character. Her name, the name of the character is Ryan Wilder. And I'll read a short description. It says she's described as likable, messy, a little goofy, and untamed. She's also nothing like Kate Kane, the woman who wore the bat suit before her. With no one in her life to keep her on track, Ryan spent years as a drug runner dodging the GCPD and masking her pain with bad habits. Today, Ryan lives in her van with her plant. That's interesting. A girl who would steal milk for an alley cat and could also kill you with her bare hands, Ryan is the most... Dangerous type of fighter, highly skilled and wildly undisciplined, an out lesbian, athletic, raw, passionate, fallible, and very much not your tip- stereotypical um, all-American hero, which is kind of what Kate was too. I mean, mm-hmm. she wasn't, you know, the stereotypical all-American hero either. So, uh, what do you think of the description? Do you like you said you like the way the show's going? Did you know about that? The, the I didn't character? hear. The- I didn't hear about the description. I knew it was a new. I knew it was a new. Uh, a new and new character that wasn't based off any kind of source material. But the beginning of that description almost sounds like Dick Grayson. You know, kind of like fun mm-hmm. and creepy and all, you know, unlike Kate. But like, and, and it's kind of like she's got a bit of a dark side. So you know, um, I want to see where it goes. I always thought, as of right now, I feel like the best show on the CW superhero wise is Black Lightning, and that's kind of gritty. So if they can kind of take some notes from Black Lightning, I would like that because that's kind of it. Seems like that's where they're going to go with that 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 gritty kind of street feel. Um, mm-hmm. As opposed to like Supergirl and Flash can kind of feel a little bit more bubblegum and unicorns, you know, like <laughs> they're not as <laughs> as as uh, serious at times, you know, like even Arrow was kind of like gritty and street oriented. Yes, Arrow so, like, was, yes. It, it feels like 
like it could fit, fit along lines with Arrow and, and Black Lightning. And uh, if that's where they're going, then I'm all for that. I like that stuff. Um, there's a place for the other shows as well. But, um, you know, the CW verse, as it should be called now, since Arrow's canceled yes. for, for now. But um, uh, I, I'm interested. I want to see where it goes because it's just – I like bats, obviously. You know, that's why we do this show. So I'm interested to see where it goes. But, um, I, you know, having – introducing a new character to pick up the mantle, it's not my favorite thing, you know, considering it's not from the source material. But I'm willing to give this a chance and try it out. Um you know, Eric's always trying to get me to be more open with interpretations. So I'm going into this Holzman style and I'm going to be very open with it. And I hope that Eric can be open as well, considering he only, he, we're at the same uh, length in Batwoman. We're about episode four. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might I might start watching it um, next season. Um, obviously, they'll give a rundown of what happened this season at the beginning of next season. So I don't really have to continue watching it if I don't want to. But um, yeah, I, I'll definitely give this a shot. Uh, the CW is known for changing stuff from the source material anyway. So this isn't exactly new uh, for them. So I'm I'm interested to see the reception more than anything else. Uh, that's really where I'm at. Is it gonna is this gonna bring more people in, uh, or is it going to the purist gonna be like, no, I don't want to see it. I can't do it. She's supposed to be. It's supposed to be Kate Kane. The good thing about it is they're not killing the character off. So you know, eventually Kate Kane might reappear. It may not be Ruby Rose, but they might recast somebody else to play Kay Kane and bring her back into the fold in in some fashion. Maybe in a uh, in a uh, Batman Beyond Bruce Wayne type type of <laughs> situation where she kind of oversees or she had some terrible accident. Maybe like Oracle, where she has some terrible accident and she comes back and she's kind of you know oversees and helps uh, Ryan Wilder be Batwoman. Who knows? And a lot of people complain about the writing of the show. Maybe this is good for the show. It gives the writers a little bit more leeway, a little bit more freedom because they're not, you know, just held to the source material and what what everyone thinks the show should be. They have a little bit more liberty. So maybe this is a good thing for that show. Well, yeah. I mean, I keep forgetting the name of Megan Tandy's character. Uh, she's the head of the Crows. I keep forgetting her name. Um, from the comics and on the show, but her, I know in the comics her character dies fairly early in the story, mm -hmm. and obviously she's not dead on Batwoman. So they've already changed that that to have this character live longer in the show. So yeah, I mean this is going to be uh, cool. It's going to be cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Again, I didn't like it with Ruby Rose. Maybe I will love. Maybe this woman is an excellent actress, and I'll love it. And I'll keep continue to watch it because I've soured on most of the the CW shows. Uh, I really I haven't started watching Black like Black Lightning. You guys have told me I should check it out, so I will. It's really good. It's really good. The first season's awesome. Yeah, so I'll, maybe I'll go back and do that. But the Flash just got really soap opery for me. Um, Legends of Tomorrow's always been kind of goofy, mm -hmm. uh, not in a bad way. Like I sometimes I can watch an episode here or there. Um, and then again, Black Lightning, I haven't. You know. I haven't really seen so, and we all I know love you love Supergirl. <laughs> oh yeah, I see. I didn't even mention it. That's how much I love Supergirl. Uh, that show to me is terrible, but I'm not going to go there right now. Uh, oh, well, don't forget the newest show that CW they're doing the Superman and Lois. I'm actually excited for that too. Um, that's true. Yes, I can't that's wait. For, I'm, I like Hulkling as Superman. I wish he was a little bit taller. I feel like he's kind of small, but um, you know, I mean, you, you, you know, tricks tricks of the camera can change stuff like that. But I, I'm excited for it to have at least some kind of Superman content because it seems like we can't get him on the big screen for God knows why. I know, and Star Girl will be moving there, so. Or, yeah, Stargo will be moving there on the CW. So I haven't watched any of it. I'm terrible. I really – everyone says it's excellent, so. No, I'm with, I haven't caught up on Stargo. I'm very sorry, everyone, but yeah. I mean, I feel like CW should just be called DCTV. <laughs> well, they have other shows, but Do yeah. They? Yeah, but they're they, – <laughs> but they're blocked. They, like, have one um, DC show, I think, on every night. So, I believe they do, yeah. Yeah, it's so funny it's, how like didn't it start with Arrow on Mondays, yes. Flash on Tuesdays, and yes. then it, it it's it's literally taken over the entire network. Yeah, once they brought in Legends of Tomorrow, they started doing different things, and they moved certain dates, and then you had Black Lightning, and then Supergirl switched from CBS to CW, and then like they had all these properties now that they can put on their channel. And actually, the CW is a perfect place for it, if we're being honest. Uh, they have a younger audience; it's a younger demographic. Uh, that tend those are the people who tend to like these, these shows. So, uh, but I uh, guess Arrow was the show that I loved, and now it's over. Kind of. Nothing yeah. will beat season two of The Flash for me, though. I think that that I really do think that's 
perfect. I mean, at Zoom, you had Teddy Sears, you had Tony Todd. I, season two of The Flash might be my favorite superhero season of television of all time. I know you're a big Arrow guy, but season two of Flash is where it's at, man. Well, the first two seasons of Arrow I loved. Um, once they got into the Ali City stuff, that kind of, I kind of was like, yeah, it's going. But they pulled back from that, which is great. Mm. Even though they ended up together, but still they pulled back from that lovey-dovey portion of it um but you know the flash i love the first two seasons of the flash too like they're excellent season one's good too i love it and uh it's weird tom cavanaugh he i feel like he just he's got annoying <laughs> in all his various roles great yeah. personal actor but i'm just kind of over it yeah i mean that's every time i see him coming back because i don't watch the show anymore but i'll catch it obviously and i'm like he's still on the show <laughs> I'll be like, what's going on? This guy, he's, he's just keep bringing him back in some form. It's it is funny. the the uh, season five. I believe it's on season five. It is uh, whatever the last season was. I got to catch up. I missed all last season because of work, but it's my next binge. I'm gonna. I might start it after this. All right. Well, we didn't. We didn't plan on this being a CW discussion, guys, but we just got led there. So this is pretty good. But yeah, let's let's give Batwoman. Let's give um, what's her? Oh, Lavicia, Javicia, Leslie, a shot. Let's yeah, and en- enough with the dumb woke comments like, oh, CW's following the woke movie. Like, okay, stop it. Enough, please. I'm tired of people just saying dumb things. Just let let give, let, it, let the show run its course for, for a change. Please stop. Let's not judge things before we see it on screen. Well, the funny thing is the people who didn't know the Batwoman character before the show began were saying that, why is she a lesbian? I'm like, well, she actually is. <laughs> So like they you're, you're taking all these shots at a show because they're doing something and well no that's the character. So again and as someone like you know like I say you know I'm not married to any interpretation but you know they were going with Kate Kane Kate Kane is that's who she is. So yeah you're right all the people were like oh they're just doing this to you know part of the woke movement or no it's it's right it's, you know let's just stick with it see where we go because. It is good to have a powerful woman in um, – obviously, we have Supergirl, but now we have Batwoman. It is good to have women leads in these in these shows for little girls to look up to. You know, yeah. it's, it's really good to have those kinds of um, actresses and playing those roles. So, Like you said, you got Supergirl, you got Batwoman on the small screen, you got Wonder Woman on the big screen. Yeah. And, you know, it's girls – and even Black Widow. Yeah, Black – in the Marvel yeah. Marvel world. So it's – it, they've had their due. It's, it's, yeah, it's, now she's it's, getting it's, um, Yeah, it's, 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 it's long overdue. Yeah. So, yeah. So, well, congratulations, J- um, Javisha. If you listen to this show, you probably don't. But if you do, <laughs> congratulations. We're rooting for you here at Straight Outta Gotham. So, good luck. All right. So, the next bit of news came today, actually. We got this news today, and it was... A little shocking for me uh, because we kind of had this already, but no, when, I saw who, <laughs> when I saw who the writer was for the show and what they were going to do with it and the world it was going to be in, I was like, Big yo, let's do this. I'm totally in. So I'm t- being very coy about what I'm going to talk about, but here we go. The Hollywood Reporter, which is where I read it today, um, Boris Kitt, um, posted an article and posted a, a tweet that they will be doing a TV spinoff from Matt Reeves, the Batman on HBO max and Terrence winter, who is the infamous writer from the Sopranos and also the writer and creator of boardwalk empire with two shows on HBO. He will be writing the show. That was the part that got me it. Um, I Pete, I know you love the Sopranos. I do as well. Mm. Uh, that show has spawned, not to go off on another tangent, but that show has spawned so many great writers uh, that have done other shows. Yeah. So the fact that we have – that Terrence Winter was from there and now he is going forward and going to be the writer on this. Um, again, we don't know the name of it yet. It's going to be uh, based similar to what Gotham was. I'm sorry, but it is. However, I'm pretty sure this one's going to stay more in uh, in line uh, with that theory and not go off on the tangent like Gotham did. So it's going to be based, obviously, in Matt Reeves' The Batman World. So that's a good sign for that movie based on what, obviously, they know about it. They feel confident enough to sh- to create a show off of that. So that's a good sign for the movie. And, yeah, it's going to be cool to have Jeffrey Wright's uh, Commissioner Gordon in it somehow. They, they said they don't know if he's going to be in it, but I'd have to think if it's ba- going to be based on the GCPD. 
you know, you're going to have, uh, he's going to have to be in it somehow. They also didn't talk about if a Batman will appear in it at all. I kind of hope he doesn't because anytime Batman appears in a show, he becomes the story. Uh, so this should be more based on the Gotham Central, you know, comic that um, Drew Baker and Rucka, Greg Rucka did, uh, you know, years ago. So I already said, if it's, if I sound excited, I am, I really looking forward to this. I'm really hoping it, uh, it's a smash. I'm hoping we get, this is the first part of expanding that universe, the Batman universe. Uh, I would love to see some Bat family stuff done. If it's going to be in a series, then great. That would be great too. Uh, this also, it doesn't mention that we're going to get any of the rogues, which of course Gotham did address and Gotham, um, had a ton of the rogues gallery. So that's, it might be, it doesn't address that, but I, kind of feel you have to have that there so i don't know and then if you do that are you bringing in colin farrell and and um paul dean what's his name paul dano paul dano, paul dano yeah are you paul bringing dean, in paul dini's writer yeah no i <laughs> <laughs> He's i know guy. i know very very you know it's close it's dc yeah, my head is focused there and um zoe kravitz is she gonna be like i don't we don't know but the possibilities are endless so I'm excited, Pete. I'm sure you're excited. Go. Yeah, I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> Sopranos, arguably the greatest TV show ever created. Uh, my Probably my favorite TV show of all time as well. Uh, Boardwalk Empire was fantastic. Uh, you also have to credit him with uh, – uh, he wrote the screenplay for Wolf of Wall Street, which we all loved in 2013, as well as 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying. So this guy knows like street-level type crime movies, right? Mm -hmm. Re regardless of time frame or whatever, 70s, uh, modern day, 80s, you know, 2000s, this guy – he he's a fantastic writer and you know as i you know because i love the sopranos i've been uh, listening to the talking sopranos podcast and terrence winter's name is brought up all the time you know he, he's a big part of that show executive producer producer and it's just fantastic to hear that he's being attached to this and it just proves that you know warner brothers is very confident in what matt reeves is going to bring us yeah. you know like you don't you don't make a move like this unless you think this is going to be huge so that's 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 also what i take out of that as you know as a batman fan first and foremost is like okay so you guys think this you guys have a lot of confidence in this matt reeves movie and that's great i mean i know it's it's only been like a third of it's been filmed but like you could just they have really strong feelings about it and in terms of like casting and who can be around if it's I, I if you see Batman, I really think you're gonna see like a stuntman Batman, you know, kind of like jumping off GCPD, you know, mm -hmm. the cape, the cape, like leaving Gordon's uh, window. You'll see the cape, um, you know, and Gordon doesn't have to be in this. Uh, it, Gotham City is a major metropolitan city. There are right. precincts all over the city, so this could be in one of like you know. New York has how many boroughs? So you could have a police station that doesn't need, you don't necessarily need Gordon. We, we, after watching Birds of Prey, we learned that that precinct is not where Gordon's, you know, located. That's not his office. So that you can get away with stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't expect to see uh, anybody really from the movie. I, I think they will be kind of separate, but I think you'll see lower level. Uh, cr uh, street level Batman criminals, uh, maybe maybe somebody like, oh, geez, like a Zaz or something like that, st stuff like that. Pro probably somebody because Matt Reeves has also got a hand in it, so he knows what his right. where his movie is going. So therefore, he's going to know what characters are wh where. So he's really going to be able to put the pieces of his puzzle where he wants it, and that's what's really fascinating is that he's he's got a part in it. It's not something that is done without his consent. It, it almost seems like he's kind of he, he's kind of being the the uh the brain of this operation right. and the the rogues gallery of gotham took over gotham and yep. that show strayed away from what it was originally intended to be and it's i think it's long overdue for gotham central to get this because i was so pumped for gotham when it first came out and then to see where that show actually went is so utterly disappointing that this is a really good palate cleanse and I'm very excited for it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting to hear because again, just the amount of confidence that Warner brothers has to give Matt Reeves a TV show in his universe about his Batman. It, it, it's fascinating. And then you don't have to, you know, and it's just, piggybacking off like the multiverse that they're building it's really awesome this is great content we're going to get and i'm so excited for it yeah i mean obviously this is separate from that uh at least as far as we know but right now it's not considered it's not going to be part of 
whatever tie-ins they're doing, obviously with the Keaton story coming back and Flashpoint, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like these are going to cross over. So this is going to be its own thing. But it's like it it clearly they're expanding the Batman universe, right? They're going to expand there. So that's why I said it'd be cool if we can get some of the other Bat family characters in maybe this show. Um, you have obviously I don't know if you do um, Nightwing because you have Titans and but maybe they tie that into I have no idea all I know is that when I heard this and I saw that it was Terrence Winter I said yes let's do this I am so looking forward to it I the same as you when I first heard Gotham that's what I thought it was going to be so I was very interested in that and then Gotham devolved into the young Bruce Wayne Chronicles like it really became mm-hmm. about Batman. It was Gordon still figured prominently, and obviously he was the lead, but the storyline revolved around Bruce more than than Gordon, in my opinion. So I'm hoping that yes, obviously Batman. It's Gotham City, so Batman will be in the periphery somewhere, and he'll be pulling some strings. And I'm sure we'll hear stories in the show about oh, there was a bat sighting or oh, Batman, whatever. But um, as far as ever seeing him, probably not. Uh, I do wonder about other characters like Alfred. Is there going to be an Alfred? Are we going to? Ha- is it the same Alfred? It's supposed to be the same Alfred that we're getting, right? Um, so. I don't know how much. Like I said earlier, I don't know how much crossover between movie and TV show we're going to get, even with Matt Reeves in charge. But like, I think you'll see a bat signal in the sky. That'll be something like right. in the background. There'll be there'll be you know drips and drabs of Gotham City, but I don't know how much crossover there's going to be because I th- I don't think they want to oversaturate it. To the point where it's like, well, I could see this Batman on TV. You, they still want to, you know. Hopefully, theaters will come back, and they still want to make that the driving force. Like Batman is Warner Brothers' number one IP. You of know, that's, that's why Keaton's back. That's why we're getting all these movies with him, and now this TV show. And it's, you know, everyone loves Batman, so I don't know if they want to just. I don't think they want to oversaturate too much. I do wonder if it's going to be kind of like Agents of Shield was in the beginning with the Marvel Universe. Um, where the show did fall in line with what was going on in the movies. I don't know if that's going to happen, but the fact that it Reeves is connected and that this story obviously will be connected to the Batman, there could be some of that going on where stuff from the movie does dribble down into the show and vice versa. I don't know for certain, but that's what they did with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the beginning, mostly because... uh, they wanted to bring a following and they figured, well, we'll tie it together. So people will come watch. They veered away from that as the season went on. So, so much so to the point where I don't even think they're connected anymore, but that worked for them. So I'm kind of wondering if they'll do the same thing here. I don't know for certain, but it would be a cool way to bring people in to view the show. Yeah. Right. If so, the show takes yeah. a, a vibe of like an NYPD blue or a Chicago PD, that could be very successful. You know, Gotham's a shady place. There's a lot of yes. crazy stuff going on. So if it's literally just like a cop show like that, that's still intriguing enough. And then if you, you can use, like I said, lesser known villains mm-hmm. to facilitate the craziness within Gotham City, you know, and – you know, you could probably see uh, lower level police officers. Maybe, maybe there's a Peter Foley. You know, we saw him in Dark Knight Rises. Maybe, right. maybe you get a, a Harvey Bullock. Maybe you get a Montoya. So maybe that's the connective tissue within that. You know, and Jeffrey Wright's no stranger to HBO television shows. He was he was a major part of Westworld for I believe two yes. seasons. Yes. So, you know, he's kind. That's kind of his home. So right. it, it wouldn't be you know weird if he made a guest appearance every once in a while if if ever so like you know, we don't know too much but everything that we're speculating and it's just you can, the fan buzz today was tremendous everyone was so into this news this is fantastic news to get a, a, a real bat centric tv show that's not about gimmicks and goofiness and just a way to sell merchandise and toys and just disrespect the source material so this is the show that i've been waiting for Right. Well, what we know about it now, right? It's obviously hasn't happened. So what we're no, what we're hearing about sounds like that's the way they're going. But that's what they said about Gotham too. So that's what I said about Gotham too, and I was horribly wrong. Like when they pitched us Gotham, they said we were following the journey of a young Jim Gordon. Well, that lasted like a season and a half until I, I uh, fake Wayne grew up and he was old enough to actually carry the show. He's not fake. Give the kid a chance. He did the best he could. I know the DC multiverse. I get it. He's out, he's out there. <laughs> Fine. No, I don't even know. I don't know if they're including Gotham in that. I, I don't know if I would. As much as uh, I defend, I mean, after watching Crisis on Infinite Earths, it's all connected. That's true. That's a very Somehow. good point. So that is a very good point. We just need a new paragon of hope now. 
Yeah. No, this is going to be, again, and the fact it's on HBO, well, HBO Max, but still, to me, that's HBO. It's a brand. You can, so yeah. You can do a lot more with the show than you can do on network television, right? Yes. It can get gritty. Um, I do. I, you were talking about lower level villains. I was thinking Black Mask, but he was just in Birds of Prey, so I don't know if they'd go down that road again. Um, I don't know. Uh, that might be somebody they do utilize because he's dead now in the DCEU. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so. that's a good point. Yeah, even though there's even with that, not to go on a tangent, there's talks about if they wanted to bring him back, they could say Harley hallucinated the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, we first did do a lot of blow in the movie, so there's yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it could be that. Uh, man, I can't. Uh, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but every time I watch that movie more than I should, it's, it's really good. It's fantastic. I love it. Uh, I'm I'm sad that it didn't. I don't think it got the the praise it really should have gotten. But I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Birds of Prey. It wasn't marketed well. It really wasn't. Yeah. It was not marketed well at all. And you know, but we're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss this Batman TV spinoff. So just throwing out the you, – you mentioned some low-level guys. Who else do you think you would see in this? Maybe a calendar man? That would be cool in this kind of show. Yeah, someone like him maybe. I, I don't know if there's – like I said, I'm sure there's a list of characters that Matt Reeves has for his silver screen and his small screen. And I'm sure wherever that list is split is um, – it's going to be very interesting. I mean, maybe somebody like Mad Hatter who doesn't make the cut from at Reeves movies. Right. You know, maybe he gets it there. Uh, Firefly was recently cut from the Batman, so maybe he makes it onto this HBO Max show. But what I'm interested, what's really interested, interesting to me is when creative people who are you have a home like HBO, they usually use similar people. You know, like Steve Buscemi was in The Sopranos. He was also in Boardwalk Empire. Like, how cool would it be to see him in, in this Batman show? Michael Imperioli. Like, just, I'm thinking the guys from The Sopranos. You know, unfortunately, James Gandolfini's not around with us. He would have made a fantastic yeah. mob boss. But, like, it'd be nice to see some of those guys, you know, uh, make it into the Batman universe. And, and that would be fun because, you know, whether it's a, a, a Daggett or, a, oh my God, a Maroney or somebody like that, somebody, you know, mob people. Like I, Terrence Winter loves writing mafia stuff. So like yep. I'm so interested to see uh, who from The Sopranos is going to pop up because someone's going to. I, you just know it is. I just don't know who. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, they usually do go back to the well. A lot of writers and, and producers do. I, I mean, look at Christopher Nolan, like with um, Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and um, Tom Hardy, and I mean Tim Burton is cast know. Johnny Depp in how many roles? Right, exactly. You know, Johnny Depp and Tim Burton. Everyone has their guys. Yeah, we have the, um, examples of this, and even on um, HBO shows, like uh, when Oz was on, you saw a lot of people go from Oz to other shows. Uh, Falco was one. Right, right. So we, we we've seen like all of this happen before. It's very incestuous with specific networks of people because they're comfortable with those actors and they know what those actors are going to give them. So that makes a lot of sense. And I'm I would love uh, Steve Buscemi in some kind oh, of role. Man. Oh, right? Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez, it's. I'm just. I'm. I'm reliving all my Sopranos memories, and I'm just wondering, like, which one of those guys are going <laughs> to pop up on the show? You know, it's 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 great, and I mean, uh, it makes me uh, like. It just, the antip- anticipation of something new, something bat related that we don't really know too much. It's just this is the first news we've heard of it. It just gets you excited, you know. And um, we we tweeted out earlier that this could be something that could re- you know reunite fandom. Fandom was kind of split yeah. for like a three year period, and that you know it just seems like this has been so positively received and everyone's so high on it that this it seems like this could be the thing. Yeah, this. I'm hoping that that's what this can do. I think this announcement should be exciting for everybody who's a fan of the character and of the uni- of the Bat uh, Batman's universe. Um, at least everyone should be excited about this because, again, I can't, hate keep keeping. I'm sorry, hate going back to bring up Gotham all the time, but that's what Gotham was supposed to be. What we're getting now, at least what's been reported, that's what that show was supposed to be. And a lot of people wanted that. And again, as we've spoken about, we did not get that. Right. So now it looks like we're getting that. We're going to get something like that. And for all the people who wanted that, well, here you go. Like, here we are now. And uh, even for people who aren't Batman fans, if it's a cop show and you like cop shows, there you go. You might bring people in. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. 100%. So you have. Yeah, so you have all of these things that are revolving around this this announcement. And like we said in the beginning, this is excellent news for what's going on with the Batman movie itself because 
HBO would not be putting money into something if they didn't think the movie was going to do well. No. I can't it's imagine. Yeah. Huge boast of confidence. I mean, like, I'm so excited. I'm tripping over every other word. You know, and <laughs> like I said before, like, my girlfriend loves Chicago PD, and I watch that show, and I'm like, why can't I get a show like that in, in set in Gotham City, set in Metropolis? You know, like, and it looks like that's what we're going to get, and I'm very excited for that. So hopefully it stays the course. It doesn't veer away, and, uh, you know, just it doesn't become what that uh, that other show on Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they bring in elements of law and order too. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe you know? maybe we get a, a Harvey Dent, you know, yes, yes something like yes. that. Which again, that other show did tease, and then we like never saw him again. I mean, it, outside <laughs> of season one, I don't think we ever saw him again. Yeah, not yeah. even in the finale when they literally brought everybody back. I know, I know. Oh, but I mean, we we have to bring it up because that's what again, that's the comparison point we have. So it's fine. We're bringing that that other show up. And even we did an entire an entire show based yes, on that show. So we if, did. If you're if you're if you're in the Batman on Film Facebook group, it's a great group. Uh, join up that for sure. Um, you can rewatch Gotham with our commentary on it. We used to do a post game show about that. That was yeah. Just type in the green room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, search for the green room in there, and you'll 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 be able to pull up all the shows. Uh, it was it was fun to trash that show, <laughs> but we weren't always so bad. We weren't always so bad. We the things we liked, we we were honest about, and we liked. So it was easier than writing about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was the original plan, and the original plan was um for the head of Batman on Phil Bill to do it in the final season, and we kind of bailed him out by not yeah, by we did. <laughs> the we saved him. I threw him a life raft. <laughs> so yeah, so Bill, if you're listening, you owe us one. That's it. That's I'm gonna leave it at that. You owe us one. <laughs> <laughs> so keeping in the theme of the Batman, I saw something cool today. Pete, I brought it to your attention before the show. Uh someone did a fan rendering of Matthew McConaughey as being as Two Face for Robert Pattinson's, um, obviously, Matt, and Matt Reeves, the Batman, and uh, we'll post the picture up uh, after the show. We'll post the picture up, and you can see the rendering. But first of all, what do you think of the rendering? And second of all, would you like to see Matthew McConaughey play Two Face in this world? Yeah, I mean, Ma I mean, I've loved Matthew McConaughey since what Dazed and Confused, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like I mean, and then. Uh, to see him in the Lincoln, I, he was in the Lincoln Lawyer. Uh, what else was he in? I mean, A Time to Kill, a Time to Kill, Marshall yeah, Schumacher movie. Oh, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the Dallas Buyers Club, right? That was, yes, that Dallas was Buyers, that's one. Yes, yes, absolutely yeah. fantastic. So, like, the guy's got chops. I mean, he he, he could say anything, and you'll believe him. Um, I just, I, I would love to see McConaughey in the role. Be fantastic. Um, he, you know, I think he could really do great things, but um, it's it's all up to Matt Reeves. But uh, I, I thought the rendering was great. Yeah, I I would love to I'd love to see him do a, a movie like this, and I think he would do something like the Batman because it's a little more grounded. So I think mm -hmm. he would be in a movie like this, and he would he would definitely bring some gravitas um to it because he's an Academy Award winner. Um, I honestly have never seen – even in the bit parts he played, like in The Wolf of Wall Street, he had a very small role, but mm -hmm. he was great. Yeah. Like he's he's such a good actor. So yes, I want – if I want him in the film, if that's what Matt Reeves wants to do and bring Two-Face in and he, Matthew McConaughey is the guy he has in mind, please get it done. And uh, we will all love it. I assure everybody I think he would do great. And um, following up Aaron Eckhart will be tough because Aaron Eckhart was great. Such an underrated part of that movie. Yes. Probably the most underrated part of that movie is Aaron Eckhart, and the sec basically what was be the second half of that movie. Um, yeah, and it's just fantastic. Me personally, I've always ever since I've seen the Lee Bermayhew uh, mock up of Denzel Washington as Harvey Dent Two Face. Mm -hmm. That's that's who I've ever wanted, and I know you know I've I've mentioned a few times, and a lot of people say he's too old, but um. Uh, Denzel's son, I believe, is in is in Nolan's next movie. Yes, and I, he's a fantastic actor in his own right. So I would love for him to even get that role. But I mean, I've always wanted Denzel. I would, I mean, because Denzel plays such a great angry guy. You know, like no one plays anger more than uh, Denzel, and that's what Harvey is. Harvey is as angry as it gets when it comes to villains. Like just he, the angst within a, a Two Face is what I love the most. Just the, just the ferocity and his hatred for everything now, uh, post uh, Acid Burn. So. I mean, I've always wanted Denzel, but you know, if you get a guy like McConaughey, I can't complain about it. 
No, uh, not at all. Again, he would be the A-list actor of the crew. And we have a lot of good actors in, already in this universe. But he would be the top one the moment he signs on. Like he would, he would kind of be the Jack Nicholson of '89, right? You'd bring in this mm-hmm. guy who has all this these accolades and this great career. He would be that. So he could be the Schwarzenegger of Batman for, uh, and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't know if he'd want to be that, but I understand where you're going with it. I understand where you're going with it. Come on, guys, and, laugh uh, a little. Will you? Like I know that movie's trash. Just have fun with it. Huh? <laughs> no, but dude, I say the puns from that film more than I should. The all the ice puns, I use them. Is. I use them. Well, it's my Ryan Lowry impression. I, I actually like her in the role. So, but she's whatever. the best thing in the movie, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, think. I like her in that in that role. I think she should get recast in the role. I think she would do it justice. I think she deserves it. Uma, if, you, if you're out there, Uma, I would recast you as Poison Ivy in a heartbeat. Would they make her green? That's my question. Would I'd be down for that. It's funny how Bane was green in that movie and Poison Ivy wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, if we had a redemption for Bane, because Tom Hardy was great in Rises, so if we had that, we should get a Poison Ivy redemption. Redemption for that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah that that's character. true. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. So... So yeah, so one final thing that I want to talk about, and you could comment again, like last week, you can comment if you want, or count not comment, I don't care. But we Gee, have <laughs> that hurts, man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You could comment, but if you don't, I won't be upset. I'll put it that way. I won't be upset. Fair enough. So we have we now have these two services that two streaming services that um have DC under their umbrella. Obviously, DC Universe is all about DC, and we have HBO Max. So, last month, I I signed up for HBO Max towards the end of the month, the end of June. I was like, okay, now I'll have all the movies. I'll have all the Batman movies. I'll have all the Superman movies. I'll be able to watch them all. And I already own the Batman movies, but just in case I'm lazy, which tends to happen sometimes, and I don't want to actually physically put in a copy of (laughs) of a Batman movie, if it was on a streaming service, okay, just watch it. It's fun. First world problems, geez. Right? Yeah, completely. (laughs) But so now... uh, after when July came, I was like, all right, I was going to go on HBO Max. I said, I'll just watch, I'll watch Batman. I think I was going to watch Batman 89. I'm like, I'll go watch Batman. I go and I had put it in my, I'd saved it in my favorites. I'm like, okay, I just need to go there. I go and it's gone. It's not there. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, maybe they put it back on DC Universe. Cause you know, DC Universe puts things up, takes them down all the time. So I go back to DC Universe and it's not there either. So we have every Superman movie, it seems, in both of them. Or at least Superman 1 and 2, I think, in DC Universe. But you have all the other ones in on HBO Max. And we now have none of the Batman movies except BVS, the Ultimate Edition. That's it. And it's only on HBO Max. So could someone please explain to me why we have two streaming services that have DC properties and their number one IP is not movies, are not anywhere on either one of them. It's definitely strange to me. Like I know, I know they do a lot of juggling, and HBO does that. Like that's an HBO staple. Like every month, their movies change. But I mean, I I like to watch them on the streaming services because I want them to get numbers and I want them to stay. So like I I'll watch a movie on DC Universe or HBO Max if it's on there over than watching it on my Apple uh, Apple TV, just mm-hmm. because like I, I'll give it some love and I want the numbers to stay up. You know, like I, I and. I've had my issues too. Like, I don't understand why Green Lantern isn't on DC Universe. Why isn't Superman Returns on DC Universe? Uh, where's Catwoman? Catwoman should be on uh, DC Universe. It should be on HBO Max as well. Like, it is. It is. Great. Then I have a chance to watch it. Then I, 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 I would love to see that. But like, you know, you've never I, seen it. I've never seen Catwoman. I've been waiting to watch it with uh, Ryan Hoss, actually. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me put it this way: she looks great. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I've the only reason I've ever wanted to watch Catwoman is because Ryan told me that somehow it connects to Batman Returns, and uh, there's like a mention of Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, it, it, like real quick. So I, I'm interested to see where that happens. But yeah, um, that's a good point. That's so true. it's interesting that that's in the Burton verse. So <laughs> it's just weird because those movies are totally. Well, this different. could be a Burton movie. Like the the the, the topic, the main villain, and what the main villain is owns in it is so ridiculous you're gonna it's like you're gonna laugh when you watch it like the product that they have is just funny is this movie gonna make me want to watch steel 
<laughs> I don't know if it'll make you want to watch Steel, but you're going to sit there and be like, how are you? She, she did this movie right after she won the Academy Award for Monsters Ball. Oh, God. So, so like, you're going to sit there and be like, this was clearly her capitalizing on that that um, newfound fame and, and upping her, her money or her salary for films because it is not a good movie. It's got a ridiculous premise, but you watch it and then you can talk to me about it then. I get why they do these things. They want to keep the audience fresh. They want us to keep guessing, so they change their library. But not to have any live action bat films on there. It, it, it is weird. I don't know why. I would love to. Do, I would love to watch. I mean, I own them physically. I own them digitally. But like I said, I like to. I like to show support because you know everyone says DC Universe is failing. So I try to watch it as much as possible. I mean, I try to do my part. But yeah, I, it's it's a weird thing. But again, like HBO changes their movie catalog every month, so I'm not really surprised. But there should be at least one of them. Put it on. But if you're not going to have it there, then put it on DC Universe. No, yeah, it should be somewhere. Right. You know, like if you want people to give you your their, I don't know how much HBO Max is because I get it with my my cable subscription. So like, I, I, if you if you want people to give you your their money. You've got to give them something to watch. And it seems like HBO Max is literally like, well, we, we got the Snyder Cut coming, but that's not out yet. <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to pay for right. something if it's not there. So you got to put it there. Uh, it's it's an interesting thing. It right. is. I mean, they did put on the, the complete BVS. Like they put the Ultimate Edition on. So at least you yeah. have that there for people who like BVS and want to watch the complete movie without any of the scenes cut. It's there, and that's great, and I think that's great because they're doing obviously Zack Snyder, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, so it's good to have that there, so someone can watch it and then eventually watch whatever form we're getting the Justice League in, mm-hmm. whether it's movie or series, whichever form. So it's cool. I understand that, and it's cool that that one's there, but I mean, not to have but Returns eighty nine forever, even Batman and Robin. Yeah, not to have any of those anywhere on either service when you have two of them running and you're charging people money for both of them. And yes, DC Universe is probably best for comics because now that's how I've been reading my comics on DC Universe. So at least, you know, that's probably where that place is going. But I mean, you have animated shows there. You still have Titans. You still have Doom Patrol. And you have Superman. Superman 1 and 2, I think, are there. So why don't you have, you know, you just want to put the Burton movies, Batman um, and Batman Returns? Fine. But have them somewhere. Because if not, to me, now you're charging people for a service and you're saying you have DC because it's, it's a, there's a big label in HBO Max for DC and you click there and you don't have any Batman movie but one live action. You have one. And it's not even a solo Batman film. Yeah. So if anything, it's like Justice League Light. Right. So, I mean, it's just crazy to me. It doesn't make any sense. And it does annoy me because I... I got DC, I got HBO Max at the end of last month because they were they were running an offer through DC Universe. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I have that. I said, okay, let me get the HBO Max offer. It's for eight months. I think I get it for five dollars, which is which is a pretty good deal. But that's one of the things I wanted it for, and now I don't have it. So you know, don't get me wrong. I love HBO's original programming. I love Game of Thrones. I love all their obviously The Sopranos, uh, Boardwalk Empire. We discussed those already. Um, I even like, I know I'm going to get killed for this, but I even like Sex in the City, so that's there. But I mean, you know, uh, give me some, give, let me have a Batman movie that, you know. Yeah. That's a Batman movie. I mean, Just a, even something like 66. I mean, I don't know. I, I know. I think that might be a Fox property. I'm not sure where they stand legally with that, but. It, it, yeah, once you brought it up to me, it is weird. I haven't done, I haven't done too much digging in HBO Max because you know uh, I just <laughs> I watched a lot of HBO Go actually. Believe it or not, mm-hmm. um, that's where I did. So I, I actually haven't made that transition. I know a lot of people, you know, obviously are really pumped about HBO Max and everything, but I haven't dug that deep. But it's weird that there's no Batman on there. When you told me to that, that I was kind of shocked. I, I just yeah. it doesn't make sense. You figured there'd be something, and like the Nolan movies aren't on DC Universe or I believe HBO Max from what I've heard. Nope. So that's nope. interesting as well. You know, you, you'd think that would be a driving force. Well, like, oh, those are three of the best superhero movies ever. I know you got your primary rises, but it, it, it's true. You know, like as as a, as one whole story, that's it's a great story, and it's shocking that they're nowhere to be found. So, I mean, I mean, I wonder if it's some something to do with the legalities with um how you know TNT and TBS. I think it's mostly TNT that shows they'll show like rises and they'll show. 
uh, begins and they'll show the dark knight from time to time so mm. i wonder if there's any and they are under the hbo umbrella i think hbo still owns them i think the last time i heard they do or maybe that's mm. nbc i don't know but i wonder if there's some legality issue there that they can't have it on the streaming service i don't know but I'll end this by uh, in a positive note that's saying Solo is finally on, DC, on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> and it is the most underrated Star Wars movie, I feel. And it is. You know what, Rick Shue? You're not a Star Wars fan because you don't like Solo. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking away your Star Wars card. Yeah, and you're, you're, I'm just very disappointed with you. And you know, me and Tom McClellan, we got words to say with you, pal. <laughs> Uh-oh. The yeah. gauntlet has been thrown that's it. down. I, I called in backup I, from the other side of the pond. I, he's coming. On, on, the, on the, what, the, the was it the the Santa Maria the Pinta and whatever the other ship was. Tom's <laughs> coming, man. Yeah. Pinta, Tom's coming, man. <laughs> what about the Mayflower? Let's just keep it simple. We'll say he's sure, coming on the whatever, Mayflower. Whatever ship Tom wants to, 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 to you know hop on. I mean, it could be the freaking Titanic for all I care. But you know, he's coming. And Rick, you got some questions to answer to. So there you go, Ricky Joe. I'm coming for you, man. I'm not sure we want him on the Titanic. That's well, no, the new one, the new Titanic, not the oh, new okay, one on the ground, okay. the new Titanic. Okay. All right. I don't know. That's just so bad. Owen, but okay. shout out to Tom McClellan, the uh, straight out of Gotham UK correspondent. Who's uh yes. I, I believe he's have- working on getting us some spy picks from uh, uh, the Batman for my personal Ooh, collection. I haven't heard this, but this is a good development. Juicy it's development. Juicy. It's very juicy. <laughs> lower. Spelled like lower. <laughs> shout out to Ryan Lauer too. Batman Book Club. I was just recently on his show. Fantastic show. Check that out. Yeah, the Q and A show. I listened right. to it. I'm like going to the comic book store. It's great. Me and uh, BOF alum Justin Kowalski. Uh, had okay. A All right. So since we're at that point of the show, Pete, you got anything to plug? <laughs> Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Vero, social media at Pete Illustrated. Uh, follow our show handle at Straight underscore O underscore G. We just had on the on the Straight Out of Gotham Twitter handle the two wheeled Bat Cycle face off between the Bat Pod and the Bat Cycle sixty six. Bat Pod won hands down. So that is your two wheeled champion. You guys made it happen. You voted. You voted often, and we appreciate all the support that you have given us um, on Twitter and everything. We've had a blast doing it, and uh, I love doing these little uh, tournament roundtables. And uh, I would like to also apologize to Ryan Haas about my comments about Azrael. I know he took that to heart. But- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as Pete was, as Pete said, and I love that Pete does. Pete does these things. We don't we don't discuss them. Like we'll just be on the handle, and I'll post something, or he'll post something. We don't discuss it. Yeah, and then we finally see it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I'm, I'm always happy you do stuff like that. Uh, also. Uh, Pete didn't mention, but I will. We also now you have a Straight Out of Gotham Facebook page and a Straight Out of Gotham Facebook group page. Yes, you do. They're linked to each other. So you, uh, if you're on the Straight Out of Gotham, um, our main page, our show page, if you scroll down, you can see there's a link to the group. Go in there and you can ask to join um, us over there. We're posting more stuff in there. We're, it's, we're getting some good conversations going on in there. I'm, I try and throw little things in there every once in a while to uh, dr- to draw people in and to make it a place to, to spark conversation. So check us out there on Facebook. The, the main page is really for us to post things that are going on with the show, and we'll have, we're will have we going to have some new things coming up as well. Grundy so, alerts. <laughs> yes, the Grundy alerts. Uh, we'll start putting all of that on the Facebook page. So You don't again, get to Red Ballpark Hot Dogs unless you can reach people on social media. No. Hormel chili was kind of easier to go along because of the Grundy stuff. They, they yeah. seem to have a soft spot for Grundy. But. The CEO of Hormel loves Solomon Grundy, apparently. Yeah. I, it, was, it was the quickest sell I ever made. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> I just post, I just showed the Grundy alert. He was like, I'm in. I was like, this is great. This is perfect. You're a salesman. So, <laughs> so again, check out Ballpark. Uh, go buy Ballpark Franks. Go buy Home Real Chili because every dollar is supporting us in some way. We get four cents on the dollar. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the dream. That is the dream. That is the dream that we can do, we can do that. So we're 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 going. Huh? Free hot dogs for life. <laughs> We are at the ten episodes now, so we're we're on our way. We're gonna get there, and we're gonna have uh, free hot dogs and free chili for the rest of our lives. The official right. hot dog of Sias in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're clearly going off the rails here, guys. So I will I will quickly plug myself because that's what I'm doing. Uh, you could check me out on Twitter at finally thirty three. It's spelled finale thirty three. Also on Instagram, same handle. Obviously, Pete mentioned straight out of Gotham. We both um, the Twitter handle. We both um, check that, so you can check out either one of us there as well. 
I believe that's it. So for Pete Vera, I'm Eric Holzman. This is Straight Outta Gotham. I want to thank you again for listening. Have a great one. Booyah.